go. <sighs> we are finally going to be doing the video that I have been teasing for quite some time now. Today we are going to be talk talking through my experience of the last Wind Olympic Games which took place in 2018 um, ahead of obviously the upcoming games in Beijing and hopefully it will explain to you my reasonings for the decision why I have chosen to still take an Olympic break even though we now know the NHL will not be having um Olympic break. I just still feel that decision was really, really rush. It was just like a rash decision to make. And I really do fear uh, the future of Olymp so of Olympic participation. Um so they're not too distant future. Uh, so like Milan Cortina in twenty six and then beyond into the twenty first season so on. I really am a little bit concerned about the Olympics possibly position that the NHL has going forward um yeah because if you remember back in the summer when the CBA was negotiated um it was negotiated that the players would be allowed to go to Beijing in 22 which of course we know that's not happening now and also Milan Cortina in 26 so 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 in order so for Milan Cortina 26 um you might want to start Thinking about all oh, because they could they maybe at the end of the twenty four, so yeah at the end at the end of the twenty four twenty five season. So when we get the Stanley Cup champion for twenty twenty five, that's when you start thinking right Olympics are around the corner. Are we going to buy and let them go or not? Are we? Are we? Are we? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, because if the league does choose to allow players to go to twenty in twenty six to Italy, then that means it would have been a good long 12 years since the last time we had uh, participation in the Olympics from the NHL. So yeah, so, right, so before we give in, think going into the far future, let's rewind to 2018. So, what's really interesting is that these two Olympics, so Pyeongchang 2018 and Beijing 2022 both happen the same year that there's an expansion franchise in the in the league. <laughs> Thankfully, that is a chain that will not be continuing in, in go, going into Milan Cortina because the league's already said no more expansions for now. I can check out that video that I made. Try my delight to it. Right, so. In fact, we had to go even way before the start of the of the seventeen eighties. We had to go back to right around just before the start of the twenty seventeen Stanley Cup playoffs, um, which ended up being quite a thrilling postseason for the Western Conference. Not so much for the East, but I mean, because I don't think a lot of the Western Conference predicted Nashville was going to go on that run. I mean, I sort of knew knew they had it in them because. Because we played them the year prior in the second round, and, it, and they pushed us right to the limit. So I knew Nashville always had it in them, but I didn't think we did the year after. Um, so it was April the third, twenty seventeen. So the playoffs were just about to start. Uh, basically, the league re uh, confirmed their intent that they were not going to be sending uh, players to um, the, the games in Pyeongchang. Um, Basically stating um, how the league's position is that it's disruptive, but it's that's not oh god the league position. All right, the league position on the Olympics is really really conflicting because there's actually two positions. There is the official league position, which is basically Commissioner Bettman, his deputy Bill Day, and his crony. So like. We should not allow our players to get Olympics. No, 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 they're distracting. No, 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 we hate them. That's one per side. And then there's the players' association side, who do, which is the players who believe actually no, we want to go to the Olympics. We want to go to the Olympics. It's it's what we as athletes work towards. You know, it's a bit, you know, a bit. I, I did sort of compare it in the emergency show we did um, with the news broke. I sort of compared it to. The Olympics being the athlete's version of Glastonbury, 
No, I... Because in my because in my industry, our main sort of aim is to get to perform a set at Glastonbury. For athletes, it's to get to Olympics. So it's all, so yeah. So there's always two. So there's technically two sides to the league position of the Olympics. There's the player side, and then there's the league side. And it's just basically you have to choose which side you're on. And I am firmly on the side of the players, um, especially because I always look forward to the Winter Olympics a lot more than. The summer games. I saw the winter, winter games. The Sony Sports. You don't really up get opportunity to see a lot. You know, it's, it's, I, I'm always making the most of all the content, and I do want to go. And in fact, I do actually. I do hope to be at the next games in 26. Um, yeah, because I think it's going to be my best shot for, at quite for quite some time to go to the Olympics, to the Winter Olympics, to a, to a Winter Olympics. Sorry, sorry. So, but we'll see. We'll get. Well. Okay, so yeah, so they announced that in, we will not say our players to be on Chang, therefore we're not having a break. Um, and so they scheduled the All-Star game. Now, for those of you who are sort of new to the NHL, in previous seasons when the league has allowed players to go to the Winter Games, there has never, there has not been an All-Star game scheduled. It sort of gets cancelled, um, it doesn't go ahead. Uh, but the way, but we're a classic and a Steam series do still go ahead because they can be scheduled way before the games. Um, so yeah. And each team's mandatory bye week in that season uh, was stipulated in the league. CBA was also uh, scattered throughout the month of January. It was a massive scattergram. So yeah. So, yeah. so basically, Pion Chang was the first games where obviously uh, there would be no edge uh, hesitation, and in the end result, what I sort of did is it gave the get gave the tour the men's tournament that year. It actually gave it some more some excitement because the last if we go let's go back let's go back shall we let's let's go back because if you go back to basically the the times the league has participated. So the first participation was in uh, nineteen ninety. Oh yep. Yeah. So, so basically, the the league has always has. So basically, since my lifetime, I was born in 1996. Uh, so basically, throughout the whole of my lifetime, up until Pion Chang, uh, the league has always sent play uh, players to the games. It's it's been it's been without question that the players would would go to the Olympics regardless. Um, but what that has sort of done in, year, in years, in tournaments past, is it has meant that, that the men's tournament has always been sort of dominated by uh, the US and Canada. Um, I'm just trying to find it. Um, right, let's, let's, let's see. Right. Uh, here, right, here we go. Right. So I'm just trying to look for the medal winners from... Um, I've got it here. Right. Okay, so we have a look over the past... So we look um, about the past five part uh, participations where the league did allow players. You can you actually see that the league didn't really have much success until the, the league got the games in 2010 when it went to the Canucks and Vancouver. So... In 1998, in Nagro, the game, the, the game, men's tournament that year was won by the Team Czech Republic, who beat Team Russia. Um, and Team Finland finished in third, beating Ka Team Canada in the bronze medal match. match. The following game, so in 2002, in Salt Lake City, uh, so that, but that's not an NHL market, um, Team Canada won that game. Ah, that was the first that was the first Team Canada beat Team USA battles. But of course, it wasn't in the NHL market. Um, but Team Canada beat Team USA. And the Sprons went to Team Russia beat Team Belarus. So then in 2006, in Turin, we had Team Sweden beat Team Finland. And Team Czech Republic beat Team Russia. So in that year, nobody from the US or Canada featured on the medals platform. Then we go to 2010. This was the, the year when it was held in the NHL market. It was in front of Vancouver. Team Canada beat the USA was a clutch game in that one. The bronze won the Team Finland who beat Team Slovakia. 
And then the last game when the Xbox was held, which was in Sochi in 2014, again you had Team Canada, this time play Team Sweden to win the gold, because Team USA lost to Team Finland in the bronze medal match. And then obviously the last games in 2018 was such a thriller, because you had Team Germany, who I don't think at the time of going into Pyeongchang, I don't, when obviously you knew there was going to be no air transportation, I thought maybe the Scandinavians would do well. So like Team Sweden, Finland, I, my bet was team, was on Team Sweden. Um, I'm not sure how did Team Sweden do, I don't think they quite, oh yes they did, they made the, they made the quarterfinals Team Sweden, but they lost to Germany uh, in, in overtime. I don't think anybody, anybody predicted Germany to get into the medal games, let alone the gold medal game, but that was quite, yeah. So 2018, even though you didn't get early travel hospitalization, you had quite an ent entertain uh, entertaining, I feel, tournament. Um, because you mentioned having medals of Dubois, the last couple of days I managed to come through. Um, but yeah. Overall, that game ended up being won by the Olympic athletes from Russia, um, beating Germany. Uh, but Canada did win the bronze. Canada did win the bronze. So Team Canada was still able to prosper without air transportation. But again, you could argue that for Team Canada, it's their national sport. Team USA didn't make it past the quarterfinals. Team USA lost to Czech Republic in the quarter in the quarterfinals. Um, so yeah, so Canada ended up beating Czech Republic to win the bronze. So yeah, so it's interesting. Okay. So yeah, so it does put a question. Now we know that there's not going to be NHL hesitation in these coming games. Does that mean we're going to get we're going to get a tournament similar to what we saw in 2018? We'll have to we will know in a few weeks' time. But we'll focus. Bring the focus back now. Bring the focus now back now to my experience of the 2018 games and how it really did just mess with my head. It was a, oh my god, it was a massive. It was a massive headache, it really was. Um, because it was just was not doable. Having to, you know, me, my, as I talked to my, my passion about the winter games, wanted to focus on the winter games, but at the same time, knowing my two teams, the Sharks and were not, were still playing, it was just, oh, it was just, ugh. My head hurt. Plus, for the first half of the games, I was actually in America. I actually was, I actually was there in California. I finally got to achieve that lifelong goal. A very, very early age, actually, to get to see my team. Amazing. I do long to get back out there. I really do. As soon as I can, I will back out there as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, so I was in California for, for the good first half of the games. And I was actually quite surprised how much coverage I was able to still actually get. Um, despite... You know, being in America, being out and about, exploring the town, being sitting most of the day. Oh, it was amazing. So it was nice to get up there. It was kind of more where I got back home to in England. That's where it all got messy. So the tie difference between the US and Pyeongchang wasn't that too bad. The tie difference between Pyeongchang and, and here in England, non existent. It was just that bad. Um. Because it meant that the games were going on well, it was the early hours of the morning here in, in England. Um, and the BBC coverage was not really great. BBC coverage of, of the Olympics as a whole, so both summer and winter, has not been great since Rio. Which is a shame, because given how was established BBC is, and given how well known the BBC is, you expect the BBC to be able to give you some good quality coverage. I mean, the Tokyo games we had last year was really bad with Tokyo. I mean, you barely got coverage um, of live sports. And the afternoon, so some from like from three o'clock, it was just highlighting the day's coverage, and it was just basically they showed you a little coverage and just had too many guests come in and to do some speaking. It was just like, no, I want to show you the co I want to see the coverage. No, you know, if I want to watch interviews on people from people who are those sport, I'd go on YouTube and do that instead. You no, know? um, because the game bit games they only come every four years, so you go on it most of it while you can. You know. So yeah, so it's a, mm, so it's a bit, 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 bit dull, really. Uh, yeah, so it was just hard to tell what, what, what was I watching live, what was not watching live. Um, 
Paralympics was even worse because the Paralympics here in England are shown on Channel 4. And of course on Channel 4 we have adverts. Now, that would be fine, except the problem is, like I remember this from the Sochi Games. The adverts for Channel, for Channel, that Channel, for Channel 4 would come in at inappropriate times. So they would actually go to commercial while the event's still going on. So you could come back from the commercial and be like, but, but, no, hang on, no, I don't even see, it was this bit at one point, like, what, 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 I didn't see something, I didn't see then. Oh, bloody hell, it really is that bad. But you pour with it, because obviously, you, you know, it's, it's only once every four years you've got to do it. Um, but because the time was on Chang, it was really bad, because it meant that most of the day's coverage was taken was up with the downhill sports. So you wanted something else, you'd have to wait until the downhill sports were done. I was round. But yeah, so yeah, so that was really tough. And then it didn't get any easier because here in here now, because um now, US viewers, you won't have a clue what I'm about to talk about, but Canadian viewers, you will, because Canadian viewers, you live in the Commonwealth. Now, here in England, we are part of the Commonwealth. And the Commonwealth has its own sort of Olympic tour called the Commonwealth Games, which which, a little bit, which actually takes place a little bit, which actually is a lot shorter than the, than the actual the Olympics are. Uh, it's kind of more like the length of, of a Paralympics, really. Um, takes place once every four years, held by uh, countries in, in the Commonwealth. Um, it's the one. It's it's pretty, much, it's pretty much one of the very rare international tournaments where the United Kingdom gets sort of split up to the four nations. So England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. Um, which is quite interesting. Although it's, it's a bit sort of it's a little, it's a little bit of a hoo ha because obviously Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland all have their own national anthems. But of course, here in England, we don't have our own national anthem. For us, it's just God to the Queen. But because you're not allowed to play that where it's not TGB, it means we we have to find. Our own piece of music. I think with 2018 we used Jerusalem. I don't know if we're going to use that this year in Birmingham. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so, yeah. Now, normally the Commonwealth Games tour gets held in the sort of summer, so end of July, beginning of August. But because for that year's games, it was being held in the Gold Coast in Australia, that meant it was decided they were going to host it in April. Because obviously, you know, Australia is like, it's basically upside down. You know? Our summer's their winter, our wins, our autumn's their spring, you know. Now, probably that is, this was happening right as the playoffs were about to begin. I remember literally having to wa watching, I think it was game, the replay of game two in our first round series against the Ducks. Very uh, late at night, and in, uh, in UK time, after the day's action. It was just, oh my god, it was just, oh, I could not take any more of this, it's just, oh. I literally had enough afterwards, I really did, it was just, oh my god. It just was not ideal, it was just not ideal, and I was like, and I remember, it just was not ideal at all, and I look back on it now and think, thank god I did not launch Tearport that season, thank god I waited the year after. Because it would have been an absolute total mess. I mean, it's going to be a bit messy in the coming month. But I've explained it to you numerous times. I'll explain it to you again towards the end of the show. Uh, but it's more than... But for Beijing 2022, it's more of a manageable messy. With Pion Chan 2018, it was no form of mess. It was just all messy. Um, yeah. So after the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, I was like, right. It's like, right. That's it. No matter what happens in four years' time, so when we get to where we are now in 2022, so no matter what the league chooses to do in four years' time, no matter what happens in four years' time, I am having the Olympics off. So I'm not going to be involved with anything to do with the NHL during the Olympic period coming up, which is the 4th of February to the 20th of February. Not having anything to do with the NHL. So it doesn't matter whether they choose to go or not, I have everything to do with the league. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have games on. Doesn't matter if you've got anything. Got any news coming out. I'm having nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. Because what you need to know about me is, whenever it comes to planning events, I basically go right. That's it. Locked. 
was, I was just lock it in my diary. So it's like, right, that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see what? So we're having this on that date to that date. Yeah, okay, good. Locked. So everyone tries to get me to do something else. I'm like, actually, no, Carl, look, it's locked. It's in my diary. Look, it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. My diary. Look, it's locked. It's locked. See, look, it's locked. I'm going to be quite... I'm going to be quite a bit of a nightmare when it comes to booking the, any events, really, because I'll probably have to go, yeah, okay, you want me to be in, um, you want me to come on this for one show on this day or something? It's like, yeah. Oh, no, Carl, sorry, no, I can't do the show. on that day. Look, it's locked. Look, it's locked. It's locked. But it's the one show. But no, look, it's locked. It's locked in. Look, it's locked. It's locked. It's my diet. It's locked. It's locked. But it's Alex Jones. I don't care. She's having a... She's not having a... Is she having a little baby or not? It's locked. It's locked. It's locked in. It's locked. Look, locked. Locked my diary. <laughs> oh, I can picture myself. Picture myself now. I'm gonna be a nightmare for, for booking events and all that agency. Because I'm like, Do you know that's like actually. One sec. No, I can't lock it. I've got a disc. It's locked. But that's me telling me that book swinging. I don't just put it in my diary. Like I literally lock, lock it in. So no one can try and change it, you know, because the amount of times before before COVID, the amount of times it, 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 it has to is we try to rearrange something. It's like no, I'm taking away that hassle for you. So like no, it's locked. Okay, yep, good. Da 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 da. da. Right, yeah, locked. It's locked in. I ain't gonna change it. I don't want to change it. Maybe you're gonna change it, but it's not gonna. Change it. Yeah, no, it's locked. Locked. So I've had these upcoming games in Beijing. I've had them locked. In my diary for the past four years. I ain't doing changing it now. So yeah. So I know there are a lot of Vegas fans going, but it's All Star Weekend. Well, I'm like, well, fuck yeah. Look, it's locked. It's locked. Look, locked. Locked in my diary. Look, it's locked in my diary. Locked in. Locked. Locked in. I can, yeah, I can tell it's locked because that penmanship was. Sh Ship is drying up. You can tell that was 2018. Right, you can look, there you go. The ink's drying. That's how you can tell it's locked. What is it? <laughs> well, come on, Sam. I'm going to go to All Star Week. We're going to come to the end of the moment. We're going to come to the moment. You're going to um, Yeah. So, the past few months have been very, 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 very um, awkward to kind of navigate because obviously we've had no idea. I Me, mean, obviously, in the summer we got that news, it was like, yes! But at the same time, I was like, hmm. I don't trust Commissioner Batman. And I was right not to. I don't, I don't, I don't trust him to say, oh yes, uh, despite what I think, you can go to Beijing, alright? You can, it's like, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't trust him. And I still don't trust him. To keep up his bar side of the bargain for when it comes to the next game in 26 for Milan Cortina. I just don't trust him. You know? So, yeah. So, I never really trust him for the whole... Through that summer. And what's worse is... When, when obviously, they said the, the schedules came out back in July. And we had the... Um, what was Schedule A. Because they said there was two versions of the schedule. There was Schedule A... Which is what we uh, got in the summer and was working towards until right before Christmas. And then there was Schedule B. And Schedule B was how the season would look without going to the Olympics. And I've always said I would have loved to have seen both schedules get released. So at least we can have a look and see, ah, right, okay, this is how it's going to work. Um... You know, so yeah, so, and plus, at the time of recording this, this, this show, uh, we're recording this on the 17th of January, um, so is that roughly two weeks, three weeks before Beijing? It's not long now, I think it's roughly, is it roughly two weeks, is it three weeks? Right, two, uh, right. It'll be two weeks on Friday. <gasps> Friday! Right, two weeks on Friday. Two weeks, right. So two weeks. So two weeks before Beijing now. We're recording this two weeks before Beijing. 
Don't worry, if we publish, if we publish before Beijing, don't worry. If we, if we, Kai will probably be one of the last few things to teleport she needs to get for a month. So go. So we're two weeks out. Two weeks till Beijing. Come on. Yes. Entirely excited on my face. Like. Plus, I'm going to get away from this madhouse for season as far as possible. Okay. So, yeah, so. We're, so, we're recording this, we just say two weeks to go before Beijing. Currently, I believe there's at least 104. Now, there might be more. I don't, I don't know. No, but the last official number I saw was 104. So, there's currently at least 104 games, could be more, that need to be made up. Now we well, now what's quite interesting with two weeks to go for Beijing, we still don't have a clue what the league's gonna look like now there's no Olympic break in. Now I assume the the players are gonna want to have at least one week off as a all star break because you do because normally with the all star weekend you get a couple of days before the event off and a couple of days after the event off. So it's like a full week, but just a couple of days off apart. So they get, so yeah, so they're going to probably work, have at least one week off minimum. So that takes the time away. Plus, as I mentioned, also I mentioned in the emergency zone, you've got to look and see which are if which if any of the thirty-two arenas are available during that period. I know, I know, actually, I know one arena that's not going to be available. That is called. We're Pegs a reader because obviously We're Pegs a reader. It's it's got it's chock a block with the Mad Turbo Moose playing home games in that time period. Our as I mentioned, is not good because we've got quite a lot of events scattered around. But we currently only have three games because you have to each team has to look at has to take stock of its own backlog of how many games it's missed has had to postpone. We are quite lucky. We've only, we've only got three so far. I don't think I don't think that's good numbers gonna grow. But we've just got three to do so far, and they all happened during the Christmas period. So yeah, so I I can't see by the time the Olympics finish on February the twentieth, I can't see those one hundred and four plus games. Because remember that not that figure. I can't see those games being all made up by. When I come back from the Olympics, for the Olympics on February the twenty-first, I don't see that happening. Uh, and February the twenty-first is going to be an important day for me because I'm going to be using that as my one and only opportunity to catch up on everything that's been happening for the Sharks during that period, if anything's happened, and the Barracuda. Look for all the past results, watch some highlights back, read the match reports to try to help me, you know. Take some notes down for those little games, so I can then still keep, give you uh, the tier, the episode looking back on probably as norm as, as normally would. So yeah, because really, our schedule in February it's it's it really is manic. It's not helpful for people like me who are going to take the Olympic break off, who are going to take the Olympic break, um, and then want to come back and uh, because as I mentioned. Because in ceremony of the games is February the twenty is February the twentieth. Um, now the sharks do technically don't then come back play again um till the twenty fourth currently the twenty fourth of February, so that means I've got the twenty second and twenty third off. But the twenty the twenty third of Wednesday, yeah, twenty third of Wednesday. So Wednesdays is no good is no good for me. Uh. The twenty second, that's Tuesday. Mm, it's not too bad, but I think. It, but I just think Mon Mondays are not my. When it comes to when it comes to um, doing work for GGX hours, Mondays seems to be my best days. I know you're thinking, what Mondays? No one loves Mondays. Are you barking mad? I know. And trust me, during my school days, I was like that. I was like, you're like, oh, I hate Monday. But ever since we've been. But yeah, seriously, as I found with these last sort of four four years, um, which has seen the the brand grow further, because I think twenty eighteen is when the brand really sort of lifted off and got more involved and had more. Because twenty twenty eighteen had a lot more time before twenty eighteen. So two thousand nine up to twenty seventeen, it was just whenever I could and as as more on short form. 
since 2018, I, I've literally have exploded and I'm now developing more long form content for you and more, more brands. So, yeah. so, 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 in the last four years of the four years, um, Mondays, I thought, have been my better days when it comes to work on the brand because I just feel I've got more time. I've got more time to do stuff. So, even though technically I've got well, you say three, but it's really two days for the Sharks next game Art Olympics on on February twenty fourth. I technically really how they've got one perfect day to do it, that'll be the twenty first. So for me it's gonna be a rush rush rush, but it will be done. So let's so just get forward to the head, really. Yeah. Now I'll mention also we can very, very quickly I've, I've covered this obviously in a previous channel port bid. Oh, I did love that bid we did because I got to use chance as a stress doll. It was lovely, it was fun, it was lovely, it was fun! <laughs> Obviously not your Vegas, but I'm just thinking, oh, what is he going on about? Blah, blah, blah. Also, well, touch it briefly, I still stand, my position we're on the Auto Weekend has not changed. I don't give a damn that it's being held in our arch nemesis. I don't give a damn if you're still going to go ahead with it. I don't give a damn on who's representing us or who's not representing us. For me, that position has not moved. I will be, for the first time in my 13 years of being a shark, I will be boycotting the All-Star Weekend. Now, this is not my choice, all right? This is the league's fault for scheduling it on the week, on, on the opening weekend. I mean, we did know beforehand, before the All-Star Weekend, was, the date was dates were announced, we did know beforehand that the league had scheduled an All-Star Weekend because, at the time, they hadn't finalised that deal with the, Olympi with the International Olympic Committee yet. So they thought, right, well, in case we don't get a deal, let's just book the All-Star Weekend in so we can say we're going to do something in case not. Um, and it wasn't until the schedule came out that they saved the dates. And that's like... Ugh. So, yeah, so... Yeah, so we did know that, that the All-Star Weekend was going to go, happen in Vegas before the, de the dates got confirmed. It's just, ever since the dates have been confirmed, right, that's my position taken. And I have to stress this, Vegas, is there a, eh, is there, I doubt there are, but if, there, but if it's a, probably a big if, if there are any Vegas Gone Nights fans watching, I am not boycotting it because it's being held in your barn, alright? I'm boycotting it. Because the league has chosen to schedule it on the opening weekend of the Olympics. So, no, no, thank you very much. I don't know if I've watched any highlights of it back. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So I can maybe talk about it on the tour, on, um, on the episode of the tour report. Because we are going to talk about the stadium series. Um... Maybe, probably not. We all know it's going to win, won't we? Be Team Pacific or Team Match Pies and... Yeah. We need, we, need a, we, need, we need a Team Central, Team Atlantic final. Then, and then that way you're guaranteed well those two teams will win. I don't know. But yeah, so... But I have, but I have seen all the um, All-Star news. That's why I'm wearing the All -Star, my All-Star Weekend jersey. To, sh to show Vegas fans, look... This is how you make a successful jersey. Because I have seen your All-Star Weekend jerseys. And they are shit! They are shit! They are absolute shit! They are boring as fuck! They are absolute shit. And why is the shield back? Why is the league crest back? Why? Why is the league crest back? We don't like it. I loved it when you had in obviously in our when we hosted in twenty nineteen, when St. Louis hosted in twenty twenty, I loved how you had the team's logo instead. Cause that way you could tell who's from what team. You know? Ugh. So so, even though I won't be watching the All-Star Weekend, I have actually seen the All-Star Weekend news, and I have to say, Vegas, your jerseys are shit! And stop trying... And stop trying to fall us, okay? You've only been in this league for five years. You've got nothing to do a throwback for, alright? I still can't believe you managed to pull out a reverse retro jersey last year, although I have to say, 
I did rate it as my favourite for that uh, that particular that particular block. So and I, I know, I know. If it wasn't with a block with in the, in the, in the episode with, with a peg and wash tune, I might have had to go could have gone a different way. But oh dear. but yeah, so no. But yeah, so it's gonna feel weird because um. For those of you who know me, I do love the actual events. I always like to, I always like to watch them. The with the classic, same series, all the stuff we can regardless who's gonna be involved. Um which is why this year's same series is gonna give me an absolute headache because obviously our game is gonna be literally right after it, so let's we'll see. I might have to do myself a massive pot of cocoa to try and keep myself awake. Because I, mean, I mean, the same series kicks off at half past midnight UK time, and our game against Bof Boston doesn't go off, doesn't start till about three AM our time. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I might, I might have to do the first period so I can so I can get a little basis to note down for the episode, note down the notes, and then we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but it's, it's going to feel really, really weird not watching the Ultimate Weekend this year. But it's my choice. It's my choice, you know, because for me, and what I did was I, I I knew the moment the dates got announced last week, I, I knew there was not a hell in chance I was gonna watch it. Not even even if it, even if it wasn't held in Vegas. I mean, I know why it's held in Vegas because originally the idea was the league picks a team on the West Coast to host it, so that way the player, if any players out the last week was gonna go to the Beijing, they could just immediately fly straight to Beijing. Um. So that meant poor Florida had to get shafted. In a year that Florida's doing so well to get shafted. You have to, you have to beg them to keep it next year. Or, is, or should we have... Or, I don't know. Uh, that's gonna, but yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel a bit weird. Because I am always up for the event. i tell you what I'm really, really, really going to miss about the Ulster Weekend this year. is the mascot showdown. I do. I think the Ulster Weekend and the, the mascot are kind of like the real heroes. I do always love their tom a bit more. Um, so it'd be a shame to on that. Please, Team East, win! Win! I can't believe I'm saying this, but Team East, please win the mascot show this year. Alright? Because I do not want that evil gear monster to win most viable mascot. Because we all know that Chad is going to be Team Cat of the West. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to be Team Cat of the East. It'll probably be Thunderbug again. He's been Team Cat of the East for three years. For three years of the row now. For three or... Because he was captain in 2018 when Tampa hosted it. He was captain in 2019 when we hosted it. And I think he was also captain when when Louis hosted in 2020. So don't make it the fourth row where... But the books of Cat to the East. Give it Sparky! You know, he's had a lot. He's had, he's, had a, you know, he's had a big milestone or somebody else. But please, Team East win. So that way, when it comes to most by mascot, one of your mascots gets it and not the chance. We do not need him in the, in the same club as Sharky. We do not, alright? Sharky deserves it. Chance does not. Anyway. It's one of the very few things we can still lord over Vegas. We'd like to keep it that way. Yeah, so it's going to feel really, really weird. In fact, the whole thing's going to feel weird. It's, it's just... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm so looking forward to the Winter Olympics. I'm just counting down to the start of it. Because I'm just looking so forward to it. So, as I always do, even though this year it's a bit hard to do. Because obviously we're still in the midst of a pandemic. You've got people whinging on one it was held in China, but I'm keep but I'm like, I'm not even deep gonna go there. Alright. China won Fern Square. Don't pre don't pretend you didn't know it was gonna be in China, alright? Uh anybody watch this this thing? I didn't know it was gonna be in China. No, shut the fuck up. Shut the shut the fuck up, alright? Don't give me that. Because we had been in process seven years ago in twenty fifteen. China won a go over Kazakhstan. So they're hosting the games. Don't don't try and Give me that shit, okay? You've known. You've known for seven years now that China's going to get the games. You've known it. Just know. You know. So don't give... Don't... Don't even try and give me that shit, all right? Just don't. Don't even, don't even go there. Because you're not going to win, all right? You're not going to win. 
And plus, I follow the bidding processes, okay, for the, for the pick host cities, okay? So I follow that process, so I know. I know it happens. So don't try. Don't try it, okay? You will not, okay? But it's still going to feel weird that even though I'm ha having lots of, of having a great time in, with the Olympics, it's still going to feel weird that my teams are still going to be going on at the exact same time. It, it's going to feel a bit weird. I mean, the air show was always going to carry on. The air show never p p planned a break, so they were always going to carry on. So the, it was the air show stop. It's going to feel a bit weird. But for me, the way I sway up in my head is there's going to be a lot more air show seasons down the line than there are Olympics. Okay, that's how I ultimately weighed in my head. I see there's going to be loads more air show seasons for me down the line. Olympics on the other hand. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like I said, they're only once every four years. So, yeah, so. Yeah. So, hopefully, that's given you an idea, a little bit of flavour, and also tell you to understand my reasoning why we're about to do what we're about to do. Okay, so chances are, this is probably this probably will be the last Tiraport bid you get for a month now. Because, like I say, when we hit February the 4th, Tiro Port shuts down for the month. Alright? I'll still be doing lots of other content. Oh, this is where it gets complicated. Give me a sec. Oh, it must be this tinsel. Still got tinsel in here from the, from the Christmas break and the Winter Classic with Louis. It's maybe sniffle. Okay, bye. So, yeah, so. I should really say, it's, it's only Tiraport that's going to be sh having a shutdown during the period. I'm still going to be making GG Sounds content for my other shows and all the other various social media platforms that I'm on. So that's still going to be going on. It's just Tiraport that's going to be on shutdown. So, so for the whole limit period, uh, there won't be a Tiraport episode um, in the works. There won't be any teleport bids being made or published. It's all going to be on a shutdown. And it, uh, so yeah, so teleport will resume. I am wondering, should we do another, should we do like a special teleport bid after the Olympics? But of course, there's no limit break now, so we can't really do that. Because I've got an analyst. I did originally plan, when the Olympic break was going to happen, I was like, right, for oh, we can maybe do a, a back from the Olympics episode, a teleport bid bid, where... We look. We take stock of the league, how the league's been going so far, and I and I would and I, and I would break my cardinal rule of look at the standings because I've not done that since the 2019-20 season. I'm so much happy for it. Can I, have I done? I don't know how to do a bit about that. Have I? No, I need to do that. Right, I need to do that. That can be. That can be for. The, right, that can be for, for after Olympics. We'll we'll come back and that'll be the first thing to do. I should have made it last year. Oh, sorry, I should have, I should have made it last year, but. I was only in the bits of testing out if it worked, and I managed it. It's like, yes! Yeah. Don't look at standings until after the, until playoffs begin. It's much healthier. Trust me. I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more about it in the in the in the, in the, not, in the distant future. But yeah. So yeah. So, Tiraport will be on the Olympics break. We'll be back, obviously, when the Olympics are over. And then, oh, what will we do about Paralympics? Yeah. We'll cross that bridge when we can. I might be a little bit more lenient when it comes to the Paralympics. Like I say, it's Channel 4, so we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you so much for, for watching today. If you have liked this video, then you know what you can do, you can click the like button below. And if you know what you're subscribed yet, then click the subscribe button too. Oh, it's a second, and then that way, you never get to miss a single moment when you come down the channel. So once you subscribe, you'll always be notified when it comes out. And you can also find me on the following social media platforms, Tumblr, Twitter, TikTok, Audio Mac Sessions Live. Uh, you can also listen and subscribe to the Trouble Podcast wherever you get your podcast. Do you know where to find us? Well then go to anchor.fm forward slash Tiraport. That's our little public page, which tells you where you get our distributed. Uh, which love. And you can also get in contact with the Tiraport Podcast. By emailing us at chillpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. I would love to read your thoughts on our show. Isn't it a teacher? Well, until next time, all set for me to say it, and so I will leave you now.